Yeah. And and down to the nightclub? Uh, I won't even attempt it. We haven't done it in years. Oh, really? Okay. I'm asking that because um, when I moved to California um, in 1968 um, from Chicago, I, in Chicago I grew up on R&B, and I moved to California and I couldn't find any anywhere. And so uh, my first or second year in college when I first heard The Tower, I finally, I mean, I, mean, I jumped out of my chair going, th 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 there it is, there it is, there it is. And I was just kind of curious as to how, you know, what, it, what you were playing then that made me jump out of my chair and go, that's what I've been trying to listen to and couldn't find anywhere in California. Um, but I, I remember once I started to play in the early 70s, playing conga drums and learning to play Latin music, still learning, but really learning then, was noticing that same thing. It's that same, you know, you could play clave to this if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I, I got really excited by that notion that there mm -hmm. were these, that, that, that even though R&B guys wouldn't even have known the word clave, but right. that there was that. There was this band called uh, Redbone that I used to like. They were like late 60s, early 70s. They had a really great drummer. His name was Pete DePoe, and he had yeah. this beat that he used to play called the King Kong, and as the song was <laughs> the prehistoric rhythm with the King Kong beat. But, but the bell part was, was this. The King Kong beat? The King Kong or, beat, yeah. That's what they called it. How interesting is that? Eh? Yeah. But then when I started, you know, listening to, you know, to Latin music and Cascada and all that, and then hearing that rhythm that was kind of in a lot of things, you know, that based a lot of stuff off of that. That really changed everything for me. Playing that really opened up a lot of stuff. Because prior to that, it was all a lot of continuous kind of right. 16th notes, so this you know, is, and so yeah. when I started listening to that music and I discovered, well, say, I could kind of break everything up, you know, but keep that same flow. I could break it all up. I couldn't do it at the time, right. but that was the idea. So then I started working towards that was, you know, having more uh, independent sort of parts going on, you know, that were dependent on each other for the groove, you know, yeah. that yeah. sort of thing. More, a little more, li more linear, I guess you would say. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I really appreciate what you're saying about, you know, how there was really no rules when you guys started getting together. It was more like everyone bringing something to the table. Exactly. Because I think it's really important to emphasize that because nowadays a lot of people, all they care about is speed and chops and things like that, and they don't really know what it takes to create a sound. Yeah. You well, know, when they, we started playing together, one of the things that, I think one of the things that allowed us to really gel was there was no rules whatsoever. Yeah. If we just came and we played and we created. Right. And if I did something, make some kind of rookie mistake, you guys would say, no, that, that doesn't work like that. Right. And then you would teach me how it worked, but it was really not far from where I was initially. Right. You know, it's just one little move a beat here or move a beat there. And yeah, and it, it wasn't fit. really so much about you making a rookie mistake, but it was more about what if you move it here so that he can do that and I can exactly. do this and it'll come become more of a conversation. It was more, more of that than yeah. anything else, really just displacing the beat, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate your taking the time to talk a little bit about that. I know that, you know, after all these years, all the interviews and all the people, you know, what about and what about and can you play soul vaccination or you know whatever it is, but um, I think it's important that people get gets to hear you talk about it, not only from way back then but then as it relates to the three of us, and I think eventually at the end of the day how 
funk and Cuban music actually do have a... Yeah, they're like together very well. You know, kissing mm -hmm. cousins and that. That Changuito in the 70s and David Garibaldi in the 70s, not even knowing each other and yet coming up with these things that are so similar in terms of concept. And I, I, think, I think that... Um, that was another thing that helped me to understand um, how to play with you guys was listening to Changuito and discovering, because he came to my house one time, Rebecca Malion brought him over to my house and we sat and played for an afternoon and I got to watch him do his thing and it was very much like playing funk music. It was so much like it, it was, you know, all the sticking patterns, a lot of the same stuff, but the way that, that it felt when he played mm -hmm. had, you know, the, the, the more the Cuban kind of feel to it, but it was still, it was like funk. When I first started playing with, especially with, with you, Jesus, is I couldn't lock with you because my time was straight up and down and yours was more loose. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't understand for the longest time why I couldn't lock with you. And that was, that was it. So as soon as I learned, eventually, or after several years of us playing together, and I learned to kind of relax what I was doing a little bit, play the same stuff, but kind of just loosen it a bit, then it had a similar swing to what you were doing, and we could, you know, we could fit, we could fit together because it's not straight up and down, you know. Like I come from that straight up and down sort of thing. R and B is like that, you know. The Afro Cuban thing was more loose, more that the, you call it fix. The you know the six and the four. So you were in somewhere in the middle in Neverland. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, last thought I would I would add to that is. For people out there is, I think our goal is, it's not either or, it's both and. Exactly. The context that you play in determines how you, how you, how you play. It's not, oh, well, I just play this and then everybody, no, it's, if you're in this band, you play this way, and if you're in this band, you play this way, and Jesus and his band might have a, a tune he wants played a certain way. It's not, well, no, I don't do that. It's, well, that's cool, what's that? You know, how, you know, not either or, both and. And the best musicians I know are always open, you know, to to that idea. Um, thanks for uh, for listening, everybody. We we're so uh, again honored and pleased to have David with us today, and uh, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to get to sit and talk music and all that kind of stuff uh, with the three of us together. So uh, see you. Uh, we're going to uh, break for a second and then check out uh, what we're going to play in a minute. So we'll see you in a second.